Hi there everybody and welcome back to my next tutorial. Um, I've had quite a few questions over the last few weeks about game modes like Battle Royale, Search and Destroy and the placing of objectives in particular game modes. Now many of you will have seen my replies and will see that that's not actually possible at the moment and by that I mean physical objectives. However, a lot of people have been working on workarounds and today I wanted to just introduce the first part of that. So today we are going to look at positioning things or finding out the position of locations on the map. Now once we know that, once we're able to find out where a particular location is on the map, so we'll say the X, Y and Z position is, we can start constructing our own versions of objectives. Now other people have fudged those objectives by placing maybe AI players in specific locations or putting messages up when the player is close to a particular location. In this video we're not going to look at those things but we are going to start building towards looking at those sorts of things and how they can work. But in this video just specifically how you can get your real world X, Y and Z position um, so that later on we can move on to the placing of objectives. Right, before I continue, thanks very much. I am working really hard towards those 500 subscribers. Everybody who's clicked the subscribe button so far, you're fantastic, thanks very much for that. Um, I can't believe that I've made it this far. Um, if you feel like you get something from this video, don't forget, click the subscribe button if you haven't already so you'll get notifications of my next guide. And also, a good thumbs up is always brilliant. If you could see your way to sharing this video as well, I would be hugely grateful. Right, on to the tutorial. Right, okay, so running in the background at the moment, you'll be able to see a little video um, that shows me running around a particular map. Uh, and if you just look closely, you'll see on the right-hand side at the top, we've got that typical message box. That message will stay there throughout the time that I'm running around, and you will see that it is constantly updating the X, Y, and Z positions. Before we continue, let's just have a think about what the X, Y, and Z positions actually mean in terms of your location on the map. So if you think about a map as being a 3D space in which you can travel in three different directions, or I should say you can travel, let's call it left and right, forward and backwards, or up and down. And if you think of a starting point as being zero or the center of location of a map, um, what we really need to do to be able to figure out different points in that space is to be able to get the X, Y and Z position. You can see that the X and Z positions relate to um, how far forward, backwards and left and right you are and you can also see that the Y dimension or the Y coordinate um, locates us in space in terms of vertical space. So that's how high up we are or how low down we are. So if we want to find a specific location on the map we need to know the X, Y and Z positions. Once we've got those we will be able to locate whatever we want on a particular map. So we're just going to do that now. So we're going to create a little experience, we're just going to use a free for all map, it doesn't really matter because this is just an experimental kind of rule editor thing. I'm going to pick a particular map, one that doesn't have too much elevation, let's take um, one of the older uh, maps and we're not going to need to go too far on this map either. And you can see it's opened up everything else and we're just going to dive straight into the rules editor. Right, the first thing that we need in the rules editor is we're just going to set up the message box at the top right hand corner. You've seen me do this now in plenty of videos. So we are going to very quickly rush through this. So we're going to create a new rule. We're going to call this display cord. Uh, that's to display the coordinates and basically what this rule is going to do is as soon as the player spawns in it is going to display their X, Y and Z coordinates at the top right hand corner of the screen. So we're just going to put on player deployed. Now there are a number of ways of making this stay on the screen uh, permanently. The way that we're going to make it work is we're just going to stick it in a continual loop. So we're going to stick the code for the X, Y and Z coordinates so to display them in the message in a continuous loop. So in order to do that we need a while. We've got control actions and we have got while. We are just going to drop that in there. 
Now what we need in this while loop in order to make sure that it keeps looping is some sort of condition that makes sure that while that player is deployed it is going to keep looping. Now there are a number of conditions that we could use in here, all we need is something that is going to stay true permanently. Just a little introduction to the while loop, if you're wondering what this block of code is, it is just a loop and it will constantly iterate or continually perform whatever code we put in it while the condition here is true. So if we kind of just simply say while the player is alive, do this, that loop, whatever code is inside that while loop will just keep running. So we're just going to set up this condition so that it keeps looping while the player is alive. So there are a few things that we need to make this work. Um, the first thing is we need some logic because we want to check to see if the player's state equals alive uh, and if that is true. And that will keep on looping. Let me just zoom in a little bit more so we can see this. Um, so then we are going to have to get the player's current state. Now in order to do that we need to go to player. And you can see just down here we've got get player state. So we're going to need that, get player state. And then we need the state of the player that is currently deployed. We will find that under event player. We can see that we're just whipping through this rather quickly. And then we need what the state of the player is, where we want to check to see whether they are alive or not. And these little um, symbols here represent selection lists. And if we look down the list, we will find player state bool. There we go. We just want that. And we want the is alive. Okay, so we want to get the player state of the current event player. We want their current state and we want whether they are alive or not. And the last thing we need to do is check to see whether that equals true. So if the player's current state is alive is true, then this condition slotted in there will ensure that this loop keeps running while they are alive. Now again, it's worth pointing out that there are a number of different ways to make this work. This is one way, there are a number of things. All we need in this block is a condition that will remain true um, while well, we need it to remain true. So this makes sense. Once the player is deployed, we want this message box to be displayed while they are alive. And obviously that will keep happening every time they spawn back in. So the next part of this is to make sure that the player's X, Y and Z coordinates are displayed on the screen. And we're going to use a custom message to do that. We have done these several times before. Um, so we are going to quickly whip through this. We've got display custom message. That gives us the custom message box that you see at the top right hand corner and we need the message part which we find under user interface just there, that's the easy bit and we are going to place some text in there I'm going to grab that from the literals section and this is going to be the message X and then we need the curly braces we want Y and the curly braces and Z and the curly braces now if we remember the curly braces are a format string, they allow us to place values in these additional boxes which will then replace the items where the curly braces are. So looking at this we've got the x coordinate followed by what that is, y followed by what that is and z followed by what that is, that's nice and easy. So now we've just got to get the x, y and z coordinates in here. Now the x, y and z coordinates are part of the current player's state and they are the player's state vector. And a vector is just a bunch of values that represent the player's x, y, and z position, as well as their direction of travel uh, or their velocity. So we can get those in two separate parts. We're going to have to build this first, but once we've built it once, it's very easy to do the um, y and z bit. So let's have a look what we need. So the first thing we need to do is get the player's state. So we're going to go to player and we are going to go to get player state. We want the current state. So the get player state, as we used it before, it needs the player for the state and then it needs the selection list or the state parts that we want. So let's just get that. We need the event player. We'll grab that from event payloads. So we want to get the player state for the event player. And last but not least, we're going to look in selection lists. And we want, let's have a look, we want, we've got these player states just here, and uh, we want the player state vector. And let's drag that in there. Now in actual fact, if you look at the player state vector, you'll see that it's got two parts to it. We can either get the velocity 
or the position. In this case, because we want the position and not the direction of travel, we need position. Now we've nearly got everything that we need. Okay, but what we actually need, now that we've got the position, the position is made up of the X, Y, and Z parts, and we want all three of those components. So we are going to go into the math section this time, and if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll find get X components. And this gets, well, actually, let's just have a look what this does. And it says returns the X components of a provided vector. You can actually see in use here, get the X components of the player states, the player state vector, their position and that is exactly how we're going to use it. This gives us a vector and we want the x part of that vector. So get the x component of the player's state position for this event player. I'm just going to drag that up and drop it on there. Now in actual fact that is all that we need in order to get the x position and in a moment I'm just going to pause it because all that we are going to do is duplicate this and get the Y component and the Z component. So why don't you, while this video is paused or pause the video yourself, attempt to complete the extra bits at the end and then we will continue in a moment. So here we are ready for the last bit and you can see we've got the message, curly braces, we want to put in the X component of the player state position in the X bit. All we need to do is fill in the Y and the Z bits. Let's do that now. We're going to go under Maths. We're going to get the Y component. And because we've already got this little block here that gets the player's state position, all we've got to do is duplicate that and pop that in there. That gets us the Y part. And then we are just going to do the same again for the Z. So we need the Maths, get the Z component, and we need this player's state at the moment. Drop that in there and we will drag and drop that in there. Okay so that's quite a long message but that's what we should have done. We want to display a message and we want the X components of the player's state position for the current event player. Same for the Y, same for the Z and that's it nearly there. Now I have just a little mention. I've had a few people uh, discuss the fact that their rules aren't working. You do need to make sure that you're filling any required components for a particular rule. Or for, sorry for a particular action so if I look on this one you can see this is where quite a few mistakes do tend to get made this uh, particular command needs requires three things to be filled in um, the fourth one as you can see is optional and it's optional because this custom message can be either displayed to everyone if you leave it empty or you can display it to a player or a team if you give them the player or the team but the other three parts do need to be filled in and if you miss them this code won't work and it'll look like things aren't working the way that they should. So let's just deal with that. This needs a list. Look under selection list, custom message slot. We're going to display this in the header text. And well, how long are we going to play it for or how long is it going to be displayed for? Well, we want it displayed permanently, but because we're in a loop, this is going to keep looping back. So um, we could put minus one in there and it will be displayed permanently. Um, but we're going to put one second in there because we're going to keep um, re-updating it as we go and we're going to update it faster than every second anyway. And last but not least, because we only want it to be displayed to the player themselves, we need the event player block. And um, okay, that's the rule nearly complete. Let's have a look at that. Uh, we've got a custom message that displays or refreshes every second. Uh, in this loop, it's going to keep looping while the player is alive and the message is going to be the X, Y and Z position. The last thing that we're going to put in here is just a slight delay in the loop so it doesn't continuously loop. So in order to do that we're just going to look under the logic section and we are going to grab the weights part and it does need a number in there so we need to tell it how long to wait for. We'll drag and drop that in there and we're going to make this really short so not 0.1 seconds. If we just have a look at what that does you can see pauses the execution of actions in a row for a provided number of seconds. It has an input of one, but we're going to make that really, really brief. We're going to say not 0.1 seconds. So that's going to be a very, very brief delay. We'll have a look what that looks like in our game, but that is the finished rule as it is. And this rule, if you create this rule, it is going to allow you to work out the positions of things uh, on a map. Uh, and we can use this as the basis for building some later projects on where we do need to place things in particular positions. You can experiment with this if you want to using the teleport option. You can either teleport your player on player deployed to specific locations 
um, once you've got the X, Y, and Z position, but we will look at that in a separate video. For now, I'm gonna leave the game mode running in the background. You can just see basically that the player runs around and the X, Y, and Z positions keep constantly getting updated as you move. And that will give you the grounding to figure out positions on maps um, so that we can move on to more interesting modes later on. And that's the end of this tutorial. Um, it is a very short one. It's a very short piece of code, but nevertheless, a very useful one. And from this block of code, we'll be able to build some significantly more advanced game modes and we will build on this in the future as we work through more bits of code and give you some more useful guides and information. As always, if you found this video useful and you've used the block of code and you want to know more, please click the subscribe button. It's very much appreciated. I'm working very hard towards my 500 subscribers. We will be throwing out quite a lot more guides progressively as go along and clicking the subscribe button makes sure that you're always kept up to date and obviously the like button helps me with the YouTube algorithm get the message out there to more people. As always, a share is very much appreciated. Thanks for watching um, and until next time, goodbye.